So continuing with assignment six, we go to our folders and we see where we left off. And I can see that I have SVG vector type here. That's ideal for black vector type. Oh, I don't want to open it in Illustrator. Let's open it with preview. Oh, I have to open it with a browser because it's an, S an SVG, not an EPS. All right, so this is what my vector type looks like. I can zoom in on my browser. I should be able to. Interesting. And then I have my spot illustration. And I have my PSD that I'm going to open into photo P. And the whole point of this assignment is to use our spot illustration, design text that goes around it, and then turn it into a full poster. That started with text blocking. And so the last thing I did was add my SVG layer, I'll show it again here, into this file. And because that is vector type, It comes in as a smart object. I can hold down option and scale it up from the center and place it exactly where I want. Use my arrow keys. It's kind of nice with that little drop shadow, so that might be an effect I play with. So that's just my blocking sketch showing underneath. And I can even play with, at this point, holding down shift and distorting it a little bit, like stretching it out a little bit, which I might do. So I have a little bit more leeway. Now that I have that blocking sketch in, I don't, or I have the vector type in, I don't really need these other layers anymore. So I'm going to unlock them and delete them until all that's left is a white background, a smart object layer of my spot illustration, which comes from the PNG from assignment five, and my finished black type that's at full resolution, whether that was done in photo P at full resolution or whether that was vectorized in the different ways we learned and brought in. So if we look at the assignment, assignment six, it is due next class, but we're gonna to try to finish it up with demos today so that we can make all our de finishing decisions for next class. This is an ideal project to print for our student show. And next class will be the last chance you have to print before things have to be submitted for the student show, which is Thursday on April 13th. So we'll be talking about that. And so I've already posted the text blocking sketch, both my rough thumbnails and my more advanced one using a modified typeface from defont.com, just screen grabbed and placed at lower resolution. And then the clean black type solution at full resolution. So this is done at 16 by 20 inches at 350 pixels per inch within PhotoP. I did mine from a vector, but you can also just digitally ink it within PhotoP by hand. So now the next step is coloring the type and coming up with the background. So in PhotoP, I'm going to save my progress here. Remember, sometimes when you, actually, I'm going to cancel before I do that. Sometimes when you bring in vectors as smart objects, we've seen a glitch in the image size that happens. So I'm just going to check 
that the physical proportions are still 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch, and they are, so all that's good. Mine's actually 20.15, so I'll fix that really quickly. But I'll do that under canvas size, not image size. Because canvas size is when you change the shape around the image. Image size is when you actually change the image itself. So I'm just going to trim a little bit of that white to exactly 20 inches. And I'm going to trim it from both the top and bottom. There we go. Now, before I want to color my type, I'm going to duplicate this white background layer twice. Command J, Command J. So I have three background layers. The top of those three, I'm going to fill with black. At 100%. Just like we did to test our spot illustration. And because my spot illustration has this nice offset built into it, it shows up nicely on the black like a sticker. My black type, sadly, does not show up. Black on black is not very clear. So the next layer, underneath the black one, I'm going to edit and fill with gray, middle gray. At 100% normal. There we see. And again, my spot illustration, it looks good. It's got the offsets. Its coloring works. My type is readable. And then you, of course, have the white background. And the white background makes that black type look stronger than anything else, right? Because contrast gains your focal point. I need all three of these to kind of decide how to color my type, right? And one thing that can really help is to have inspiration. So if I look at different poster designs, you know, I was thinking kind of a tattoo flash art when I made this box. There are a lot of kind of traditional tattoo posters. Some of them use banners on dark backgrounds. There are newer ones, kind of street art aesthetics. I can look at book covers, I can look at movie posters, all for ideas about how to color type. So I got all these different things. Not even to steal colors from, but just to understand how they're using the type and how they're coloring it. So this one is on a dark background, and it has a stroke around it, and it has an inner shadow on it, and it's with a flat fill color of blue. And then up at the top, it has a warm color. And if you squint, both of those colors are lighter than 50% gray, and so they're showing up on that 80% dark background of dark blue. You can see how color adds to that. Right? This just has simple light text on a red banner, which gives you a lot of flexibility but I don't have banners built into my text design. I didn't want to cover up my illustration that much. This one has a lot going on. It's got kind of drop shadows. It's got dimensional offsets, so it looks 3D. It's got an extra outer glow on that offset. So it's just got every step. <laughs> because if it was just red lettering, bless you, going on the black background, you wouldn't be able to see it at all, so it adds the white piping around, and then it adds an echo shadow, and then it adds blue piping, and it's maybe a little overdone. In fact, it might even overshadow the spot illustration a little bit. And this is all just based on your taste and your observation. So what if instead of these kind of tattoo designs, what if I look for something else? And I, I really like kind of vintage poster design. So why don't I just look at vintage poster design? Who knows what these will be posters for? So you have late 19th century kind of French design, early 20th century modernist design, like 1950s and 60s kind of pop limited color poster design. And they all use type and color in a slightly different way. And then all of these kind of digital ones trying to mimic these styles with textures, with desaturated colors 
with sometimes multiple strokes on them. And this might, you know, you want to see what appeals to you. For however complicated or difficult. I kind of like this Eiffel Tower lettering. I really like the old kind of travel poster lettering. These are all pre-digital. I can even steal colors directly from these if I want. And these are things that can affect how you text, text block and how you space things, but what I'm looking for now is how they're colored. Sometimes it's analogous colors, very close colors. Sometimes they're complementary, like the, the red and the orange against the blue and the green. Sometimes they're just not very readable at all. Like, I don't love this. Dark type on dark blue doesn't read too well. So, being inspired by that stuff, I now want to look at my project and decide which background to build it on. And I think I'm going to use middle gray. So now I'm going to take my black vector type and I'm going to duplicate it onto a new layer. So at any time, I can just turn off and see what the black type is looking. And I'm going to rename it. It's a duplicate, so it's still a smart object as my color vector type. And now, just like we did to color our logos, I'm going to double click it and I'm going to turn on my layer styles. And the first thing I'll choose is my overall color. So the default in Photo P is just black at 100%. That's what I already have. So I want to change that. And instead of using the color selectors, which I can do, I can choose red, I can choose green, choose any number of weird colors. What I can also do is whenever you have a color selector, you can also just hover over any image open in Photoshop and steal the color. So I can steal the color from my image. See how that looks. I can use the blue, I can use the yellow, I can use the purple. And basically I'm trying to figure out if I want to go darker than middle gray or if I want to go lighter than middle gray. And I kind of like this, this desaturated kind of grayish blue. I think it complements kind of the warmth in the font's head for me. So then I want to check that on my different backgrounds. So does, does that appear on, oh, I have to say okay. That effect can be turned on and off, right? This is what it looks like with black. This is what it looks like with that color, color overlay, that color fill I chose. On a black background, yeah, that reads. Could be improved, but it at least reads. On gray, it's probably the most challenged, but I still like it. And then on white, come on, turn off. It reads better, I think, than the black does. It's not quite as strong. Okay, now I want to play with other effects on it. So I'm going to keep it on gray. And to help it show up a little bit more on gray, just like some of those vintage posters, I was inspired by, I can play with a stroke to the type. So I'm going to click on stroke. Try to be patient here. I keep double clicking. And then I'm going to make the stroke not on the outside, but I'm going to make it on the center. And I'll start with it as black and just see. Now, the reason I don't want to put it on the outside is because I spent a lot of time with my type to fix the kerning, to get the space between the letters where I wanted it. And you can see that when you add a stroke, it adds to the outside, and it can kind of ruin all of those kerning efforts. Center can do it as well, but center will split the difference, like it does in a vector program, when you outline a vector. So I just want to see what I can get away with center and sometimes it's easier. So that looks okay. I don't like how close it is with the R. It looks okay there, but I don't like how close it is with the O and the L. So you can always type in values too. So let's try like 25 pixels. Yeah, so that, that reads pretty well. 